the last video, you just saw I had a demo of a permutation test. And for that permutation test, we just used the upper tail because we were looking for um, test statistics that would show that biology majors are paying more on average for textbooks than sociology majors. However, um, we could change our hypotheses if we were doing a different sort of, um, if we had a different sort of research question. So this video is going to um, kind of show how we would tweak the code from the previous video to fit into this um, new setting where we have different hypotheses. Okay, so, and actually we're also going to do a couple more things to kind of level up our R skills. So here's our code from before. And um, if we ran this a few times, so here's our p-value from doing it once, and maybe again, and we would, um, we may get different results if we run it again and again and again because we're using random numbers. So one thing that you can do to keep the random numbers the same is to set the random seed. So just type set.seed and then I like to put in one, two, three, four, but you could put in like, you know, your birthday, birthday of a loved one, whatever. And so then this will keep the random numbers the same. So let me show you. So um, we talked about the sample command one through seven. If we do that once, do it again, we get different results because of randomness. But if we run the set.seed, one, two, three, four, and then run the sample command, now let's reset the seed and run the sample command again. Whoops. Then we get the exact same results. So resetting or setting the seed will help us um, have the same random numbers every time we run it. So therefore, like, if you saved this work and then came back another day, ran it all again, then you should get the same p-value. Okay, so that's um, our first level up our tip. Um, now let's talk about changing the hypotheses. So our original hypotheses, that we were working with, the null was the two means are the same. In other words, biology majors and sociology majors spend the same amount on textbooks on average in a semester. And our alternative hypothesis was that biology majors pay more on average than sociology majors. And because of this alternative hypothesis, we just used the upper tail. In other words, down here when we were looking for this uh, when we we're counting up the number of simulated test statistics that are greater than or equal to our original test statistic, we only looked for greater than or equal to. If we had a different sort of research question, let's imagine now that um, we think that sociology majors actually pay more than biology majors, then our alternative hypothesis would be less than. So what would we need to do to um, tweak this R code in order to work for our new R alternative hypothesis, we would need to look for test statistics in the other direction. So down here, we would say less than or equal to. Okay, so let's think about this. Now our alternative hypothesis is saying um, that biology majors are paying less on average than sociology majors. So we need evidence that sociology majors are paying more than biology majors. And that would be whenever we have a test statistic that is extreme, mean in this like lower tail direction. Okay, so let's run this with our new alternative hypothesis. And we get a p-value of point. 999. And that is really, really big. In fact, it's definitely bigger than a usual significance level such as 0.05. And so we would not reject the null hypothesis. So when you have a really small p-value, you do reject the null in favor of the alternative. And when you have a really small p-value, and when you have a really large p-value, then you do not reject the null in favor of the alternative. So we would 
not be able to say that sociology majors pay more on average than biology majors for textbooks. All right, so now we've looked into a one-sided alternative hypothesis that used the upper tail, and we've looked at a one-sided alternative hypothesis that uses the lower tail. And those corresponded to the alternative hypothesis that one group, such as biology majors, pays more than the sociology majors um, on average. And then um, for the other tail, for the lower tail, then that would be corresponding to the alternative hypothesis that sociology majors pay more than biology majors on average for textbooks in a semester. Now let's imagine that we don't have a suspicion one way or the other. We just want to see whether one group pays more than the other group. We just want to see if there's a difference between the two groups. So in other words, we want to see if the mean for one group is not equal to the mean for the other group. Um, so there's not really a good like not equal to sign um, in R. So you can just use the exclamation mark equal to indicate not equal to. Okay, so our alternative hypothesis is that they just pay different amounts on average. Let's go ahead and continue using the same data. And most of this script will stay the same, but where it's different is how we calculate the p-value. So we simulate the test statistics in the same way. What we do now is just change how we calculate the numerator. So what we can do is we're going to look to see both the proportion of simulated test statistics that are um, greater than or equal to our original test statistic and the proportion of test statistics that are less than or equal to our original test statistic. So we could name this as like, hmm, what's a good name? Lower prop. So this would be the proportion of test statistics that are um, less than or equal to our original test statistic. And then let's also calculate the upper prop. So that would be the sum here. So this is saying, um, find how many of these um, test statistics in the null distribution are greater than or equal to our original test stat. So let's go ahead and look at these two proportions. Okay, so for the lower prop, we've got 999. For the upper prop, we've got four. We want to take the smaller of the two. So we're gonna take the smaller of the two Again, let's throw parentheses around it so we can see what it's doing. So this will take the smaller of the two is taking the min and then saving that as take this. So four, or I guess really this isn't a proportion yet. This is a lower sum. Okay, now we have the tail that we're going to take. And so then we can take that count, add one on, and use that as the numerator. And again, let's do this. So we have now five, and our denominator is still m plus one. And then now our p-value, because we're doing a two-sided alternative hypothesis, our p-value is going to be two times the numerator over the denominator. So we get a p-value of 0 0.0009999. So that is our p-value for our two-sided alternative hypothesis 
which is mu biology is not equal to mu sociology. All right, now let's interpret this. So it is, this p-value is definitely smaller than our significance level of 0.05. So we would reject the null in favor of the alternative. And now how do we interpret that? We could say that the two means are not equal. So to say this, um, like in the context of the study, the mean amount that, bi that biology majors spend on textbooks over a semester is significantly different from the mean amount that sociology majors spend on textbooks in a semester. So this is how we can word it to go with our two-sided alternative hypothesis. We just say, since our alternative hypothesis is the two means are different, then in our interpretation, we need to say the two means are significantly different. Alrighty, so that is how we can tweak this to do um, different types of alternative hypotheses. So we've got three options total for alternative hypothesis. We can do um, mu b minus mu s is greater than zero, mu b minus mu s is less than zero, or mu b minus mu s is um, not equal to zero. So this alternative hypothesis determines which tail we take. If we use mu b minus mu s is greater than zero, then we need to use the upper tail. If we have mu b minus mu s is less than zero, then we need to use the lower tail. And if our alternative hypothesis is mu b is not equal to mu s, then we need to find the smaller tail and use that smaller tail. All right, good luck. You got this. You can do this. Have fun with R. See ya.